NVIDIA versus AMD is unarguably the most important decision for your gaming PC. The most important part of a gaming computer is the graphics card, and it's the part where you're going to spend the most money on. It seems like everybody picks a side and then tells you which one is best, but which one is better, NVIDIA or AMD? I'm Tommy from Vectech. I think you'll get a lot from this video because I like to keep my videos straight to the point and not complicated. I don't want to bore you to death with tech jargon and complicated specifications. I just want to help you make a simple, informed decision. By the end of this video, you'll know which graphics card is right for you. Let's get into it. So what is NVIDIA or AMD? Let's have a quick introduction if you aren't familiar. NVIDIA and AMD are the biggest companies that make graphics cards. In simple terms, those are the big bricks that process video games picture on screen. Simply put, the better the graphics card, the better your games run. NVIDIA is associated with the GeForce branding, now known as RTX, which stands for ray tracing, which is one of their huge features that we will get into later. They are also typically green with the logo on screen here. Their card names are usually like RTX 4090, RTX 4060, etc. AMD is associated with the AMD RX branding and is associated with the color red with the branding on screen. Currently, their cards are named like RX 7900, 7800, XTX, etc. And that's right, you're not missing anything. Each company has very similar branding. The RTX and RX is very confusing. It used to not be like this. I have no idea why they changed it, but what do I know? With that out of the way, let's figure out which one is better. Performance. The most important part of any graphics card is the performance, right? The graphics card is the most important part of actually running the video game, so you want one that works good. So what's better performance-wise, AMD or Nvidia? Well, it's just simply not that easy to say, and that's probably how you got to this video in the first place. On paper, Nvidia has better performance, but you're gonna have to pay $2,000 more for it. The best performing graphics card in the world right now is the Nvidia RTX 4090, which goes for a small fortune of $2,000. Now, before you click off the video and give up on PC gaming, rest assured that is an outlier, not the normal. And this is where the battle of Nvidia versus AMD really begins. I personally would never spend that much on a graphics card, and I'm guessing you wouldn't either. But let's say you wanted to spend a normal amount of money on a graphics card that performs well, anywhere from the range of $200 to $700. Well, then the performance of an AMD graphics card would actually hugely outshine Nvidia. But we will cover the price for performance in the next section. Let's just talk about the performance right now side by side. For the ultimate best performance, NVIDIA wins hands down. NVIDIA's top-end cards absolutely pull ahead of anything AMD has on the market currently. In fact, AMD's top-end cards cannot even compete with some of NVIDIA's top-end cards. Look at this clip. AMD's top-end card, the 1700 XTS versus the NVIDIA RTX 4090. The FPS difference is insane. Clearly, NVIDIA is the winner. Now, clearly, the NVIDIA 4090 is way better, but do note that card is nearly $2,000 more than the AMD card, so don't make any decisions just yet. What's interesting is that the lower you go in price and card series, as in if you're trying to buy a more mid-range graphics card that most consumers like you and me are buying, AMD actually has much better performance than Nvidia. In most direct comparisons, AMD's mid-range and low-range cards beat Nvidia's cards in pure performance. Now look at this comparison here. These two cards are very similar in price, but one's AMD, one is Nvidia, and the AMD card runs significantly faster than the Nvidia card for the same price here. But why is AMD winning at the lower end? That's because right now Nvidia seems to target the higher end gaming market industry and promotes new gaming technology like ray tracing. However, AMD specifically targets the mid to low range gaming industry, which is what most people are buying anyways. This means ultimately higher end cards are much faster on Nvidia's end, but the lower end cards run much faster on AMD's side. So performance wise, Nvidia wins if you're aiming to spend a lot more, but if you're looking to buy a normal priced gaming computer, AMD might actually be a much better deal for you. But there's a lot more to this. New technologies like ray tracing, DLSS, or FSR and VRAM make the situation much more complicated. While AMD cards run faster on pure game performance, when it comes to ray tracing, AMD starts to really fail. So let's jump into ray tracing. Now, ray tracing is a new technology you may not have heard yet, especially if you're coming from console, but ray tracing is a super cool technology that is pushing gaming to a new world. Basically, ray tracing makes games have lighting that is just like real life lighting. It transforms games and makes them so much more realistic and immersive. Look at some of these pictures on screen, the difference is jaw dropping. Now, Nvidia named their cards to RTX to state that they are ray tracing cards. The reason is ray tracing is probably the most demanding thing ever invented in gaming. As it is using real life lighting, it requires a ton of processing power, specifically requiring ray tracing cores on a graphics card. This is where most Nvidia fanboys, myself included, state why they buy 
NVIDIA cards. Ray tracing was essentially pushed onto the gaming world by NVIDIA, and due to this, they had a massive head start with the brand new graphics cards with the new ray tracing cores, which process that ray tracing. The problem is AMD has now put ray tracing cores onto their cards, but they run incredibly slow compared to NVIDIA cards. Every new major game is now coming with ray tracing, and gamers are expecting it in every game as it makes a game so much more immersive and transforms the world. Look at this video of AMD versus NVIDIA ray tracing. Shout out to Daniel Owen, one of my favorite YouTubers here. In this example, the AMD card is running at 30 frames per second, and the NVIDIA card is running at 55 FPS with the ray tracing. That means the NVIDIA card is running nearly twice as fast due to its better ray tracing capabilities. But it's more complicated than that. Many critics argue that ray tracing is still a very early feature, and many people still don't enable it in their games. On console, ray tracing is basically not implemented because the consoles quite literally can't run it well. And many argue that it won't be widely used until the games start running ray tracing well and consoles adopt it. And they're right. In most games, you can expect a severe performance hit when activating ray tracing, and it's clear that the technology to support it isn't quite there yet even years later. The other important argument is that many budget graphics cards cannot even run ray tracing at all. Many people say any graphics card under $500 isn't even capable of running ray tracing at all right now, and in some instances, they're right. The cards just aren't fast enough to handle it yet. So that brings up a point to consider. If you're only looking to spend $200 to $300 on a graphics card, it might not even run ray tracing at all or very poorly. So why would you even want to consider that as a factor in your decision? But if you're looking to buy a more expensive graphics card and ray tracing is important to you, you might want to get the NVIDIA card. So to recap, ray tracing is a huge new expanding technology in gaming. AMD has significantly worse performance in ray tracing, but improving. NVIDIA is the best, but cheap graphics cards often cannot run ray tracing at all. So unless you're spending a little more on the card or ray tracing is super important to you, it might not even be worth considering ray tracing as a factor in which company you're buying from. Now, which card gives you the best price per performance, as in which one is the best bang for your buck. As mentioned earlier, while NVIDIA cards on paper may run better at the top end, the price comparison may shock you and make you an AMD fan. The top end NVIDIA card is about $2,000, and the top end AMD card is just about $900. The most important thing to know is for the higher end of performance, NVIDIA is better but you're spending a lot more. As you move towards the cheaper cards and lower end, AMD is actually way better for the price. That's why if you're looking to get a mid to low range card, most people, myself included, would recommend that you get an AMD card. Let's take a look at the mid range options. An NVIDIA RTX 4060 displayed in this video for $350, the same performance as a $250 AMD card, the RX 7600, which is $100 less. Look at this on-screen comparison from Daniel Owen. Again, shout out to his channel. He is great. Give him a subscription if you haven't already. But notice that the AMD card is $100 cheaper for the same performance. When you're focusing on budget builds, that's really important. Now let's assume you spent the same amount of money on the AMD card and NVIDIA card and compared them here. Let's assume you decided to spend $350 on both both an AMD and Nvidia card. This is a comparison of that here. The AMD card is $320, the 7600 XT, and this is compared to the $350 Nvidia RTX 4060. The AMD card is significantly more powerful, even being cheaper than the Nvidia card. The AMD card is nearly 20% faster, and it's still cheaper than the NVIDIA card. Thank you again, Daniel Owen, for the comparison. Link to his channel in the description. The main takeaway of this point is to note that you get a much better price per performance from AMD, and if you're looking to get a better value graphics card, AMD is likely the better choice. And I don't think most people watching this video are interested in spending $1,000 on a graphics card. I myself am certainly not interested in spending that much either. But if you are, the higher end NVIDIA cards will be better. Moving on to VRAM. VRAM is something I don't see many people talk talking about in these comparison videos, but I promise you it's going to be one of the most talked about things regarding these graphics cards over the next few years from 2025 here and beyond. VRAM is the amount of video RAM on a card. In simple terms, the more you have, the better. The main issue is you don't really need a lot, but once you run out, it's over. Once your card runs out of VRAM for a game, it will become a stuttering mess and it will become basically unplayable until you lower the settings. Now remember that ray tracing we talked about earlier? That super cool immersive feature? big problem. It uses a ton of VRAM. So naturally, you'd think NVIDIA cards would have a lot of VRAM to help that, right? Well, you'd actually be incorrect. NVIDIA has some of the lowest VRAM on their cards. This can be very frustrating when you're trying to play new games with ray tracing or high settings. Because if you run out of VRAM, there's nothing you can do as a game will basically be unplayable until you turn down the settings. This also makes the cards way less future-proof. But we do have a winning champion in the corner here. It's AMD. AMD is very gracious with their VRAM. In 
in fact almost every one of AMD's cards has way more VRAM than the equivalent Nvidia version. And if you're someone who wants to future proof your card and play higher settings without worrying about the VRAM limitations, AMD always wins in this category. DLSS and FSR are both new gaming technologies that have rapidly taken the world by storm, even being featured in the just released PS5 Pro. Simply put, Nvidia DLSS and AMD FSR are both technologies that use AI to make your games run faster by using AI to output part of the game. Most times it's actually a pretty significant performance boost often giving you 30 to 50 FPS bonus depending on the game. But it's time to pull the curtain. While these technologies are awesome, they have significant drawbacks. A lot of the times the AI guess is wrong and it can cause significant blurriness on the screen, artifact, or just glitches. Here's some pictures of that on screen. Now the main point of this comparison is to highlight that Nvidia's technology is by far more refined than AMD's in a way better. Nvidia significantly has less image quality issues and even has an upgraded version to specifically make ray tracing run faster. Unfortunately, AMD's version is often criticized and I can see why. I've personally used both and when I use Nvidia's version, it's very hard to notice the difference, but AMD's version can really get rough at times and cause a lot of problems. Now these technologies really help if you're playing games at higher resolutions like 4K or if your computer is really struggling to run games, so it's good for future proofing. So if you're a 4K gamer or planning on a really budget build, this can be a really important thing for you to consider. Nvidia wins this one hands down, especially as many of these technologies are very good for future proofing your computer. Now let's talk about card features. Nvidia and AMD cards both come with their own exclusive card features, hoping that you pick one side over the other. Historically, Nvidia always had the edge and often more features than AMD, however, in recent years AMD has caught up. In my honest opinion, you're not missing any features really by buying one card over the other, aside from the aforementioned ray tracing and DLSS that Nvidia has, and the other niche thing for video editors we'll discuss in a minute. However, for most gamers, you're getting both a great app for driver updates and features, both sides have good built-in video recording, which is nice if you like to share gaming clips with your friends, or if you're a streamer or a YouTuber. I think AMD has a much better overclocking interface personally. I mean, just take a look at it on the screen, I really like it. Overclocking is minimal these days, it's always nice to get that 1-2% to performance boost, and it's nice it's easy to do on AMD. For software engineers, video editors, or those working with intense development programs online, you might actually require an NVIDIA graphics card. NVIDIA has a specific thing called CUDA, which in simple English is a way for programs to super efficiently utilize the graphics card for processing. For video editors or software developers, this means the software you use can actually utilize the power of your graphics card to speed up rendering, processing, or just to make the program run well. For many professional video editors, CUDA is an absolute requirement or it'll take literal days for their video to render, and CUDA can minimize that just to hours. For most gamers, this isn't relevant, but I thought I'd toss it in in case you have a future in video editing or your work or career might be in software engineering or development. It's something to consider. Last but not least, drivers. Each graphics card requires you to download drivers, which is simply put a program that allows a graphics card to speak to your computer and run the games on your computer good. Now, like 10 years ago, AMD used to have really bad drivers, but they fixed that like 8 years ago, so it's not even something to consider, but that myth is still spread. Both cards have really good drivers that will both run your games great. Nvidia does come slightly ahead here with their advertised day one game ready drivers, where they advertise they will almost always have a specially developed driver for those brand new big releases. So your games can run better on day one. Now I've seen a decent 5 to 10 FPS boost from these drivers and they can fix a lot of games stuttering or lag. Ultimately both sides have great drivers these days and it shouldn't be a problem. I just wanted to dispel the myth that AMD has bad drivers if your friends were saying that. They used to like 10 years ago and they don't anymore. Well there you have it, AMD versus Nvidia. In simple terms, let's recap. If you want a better value graphics card and you're looking to spend $200 to $500 on a graphics card, AMD has much better performance for price much higher VRAM, but can struggle with ray tracing. If you want the absolute best performance and best ray tracing performance with the best new technologies like DLSS, it might be best for you to buy an Nvidia card, but be ready to pay a lot more money for it. AMD by far has the best performance per dollar of the video cards, but doesn't necessarily have the best performance. Both cards have great features including video recording and good drivers, but Nvidia does have a slight edge for video editors or other software development related tasks with CUDA. All in all, for most gamers looking to get a great value card, AMD is the best bet. But for those looking to get the best visuals and performance, Nvidia is the best, but way more expensive. Now let me know in the comments below which card you have or which card you're going to buy. 
I personally have an NVIDIA RTX 4070, and while it's been a great card to me, the low VRAM has been a trouble in newer games. It has great ray tracing performance, but when you're hitting the VRAM limit, you can't ray trace at all, and it's left me a little disappointed, especially because this card was nearly $800 when I bought it. But the CUDA technology speeds up my video rendering massively. It used to take hours to render videos, and now it can be done in just minutes. I've been satisfied with the DLSS and overall performance, and it was kind of the only card available when I went to buy it two years ago. But what do you guys think? Let me know what graphics card you have. Are you team red or team green? And let me know if this video helped you make a decision. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I'm Tommy from Vectech. Take care.